Hi, I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com. Retirement planning can be complicated and it's easy to make mistakes. Joining me to discuss some key retirement planning pitfalls is Tim Steffen. He's Director of Financial Planning for R.W. Baird. Tim, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. You put out a terrific piece highlighting 10 retirement planning mistakes that, that folks often run into. Let's cherry pick some of them. The first, and you think sort of an overarching yeah. issue with a lot of people, is that they come into retirement without a plan. Let's talk about the pitfalls of doing that. And, and even if you've been a dedicated do-it-yourself investor, what are some ways to ensure that you have a plan for retirement? Yeah, you know, the, the common joke in the planning industry is people spend more time planning vacations than they yes. do retirement. So you, know, you really need to, if you're going to head into retirement, you need to have put some sort of a plan together. Just assuming it's all going to work out just fine is, is not a plan. That's a, that's a wish. Um, so sitting down with a qualified advisor who can help guide you through some of the, the planning process. There's a lot of ways to kind of do it yourself. Uh, you go online and find a lot of the tools that are out there. But uh, sometimes those plans are only as good as the assumptions you make. And ultimately, you can make a financial plan say whatever you want it to say by using incorrect assumptions. So you know, working with a good advisor who's got some experience doing this and can kind of lead you down the right path on how to put a plan together, uh, that's the best way to start. Okay. One of the other big pitfalls for retirees, especially those who have worked for the same employer for many years and maybe have gotten company stock over the years, is being too concentrated mm -hmm. in a holding or maybe a handful of holdings. Why is that such a big risk and what steps can people take to mitigate it? Sure. The, the best line I ever heard on that was that a concentrated position is a great way to create wealth but a horrible way to maintain it. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you've got all these people who've done very well with their individual stocks and are afraid to make the transition into a diversified portfolio. But the reality is that's the best way to maintain the wealth you've accumulated. And um, you can talk to anybody who lived through the tech bubble about what it was like to hold a single position. So um, it's, it's a tough conversation to have with somebody who's seen a very successful position grow over the years, but it's one that, that advisors need to have with their clients. Uh, and and you know you, what we try to do with with individuals on that is really take the emotion out of it. We say, all right, what is a, a piece of the portfolio you're comfortable having in that stock or that that fund, whatever it may be, and how soon are we willing to get there? And then we just do the math and we say, all right, every quarter we're going to sell a bit so that on a pro rata basis we get to that target by your date. And again, take the emotion out of it. Let's just the, focus on the big picture and, and uh, be able to move out of that position. And the idea of having sort of that phased withdrawal from that holding is that it gives you sort of a variety of selling points. Mm -hmm. So sure. you experience a variety of different market environments. And what we tell our clients is that, uh, you know, don't don't delay it. Just because the stock is going up doesn't mean you're going to wait for the right price. Because if that if you're waiting for the right price, you're never going to find it. It's it, There's always going to be a reason to wait. So, you know, we say you're, you're certainly able to accelerate your sales if you want to move out faster. But we're we're not going to push anything off. We're going to commit to this process. Okay. Another pitfall that you highlighted here is having too little in stocks. And mm -hmm. so let's talk about why retirement portfolios should arguably look different yeah. than perhaps they did 30 years ago. Yeah, you know, there's the old rule of thumb that your your allocation to stocks should be your you know, 100 minus your age. Right. So as you get older, you should wind down your exposure to stocks. And, and I think that's a, a really scary thought. Uh, the fact is, a lot of people these days spend a third of their life in retirement. And we're going to have that much of your time spent where you're not contributing to the portfolio anymore. You need your, your portfolio to continue to grow. So uh, you know the, the, the common mistake is that when you hit retirement, you start you know, take your, your foot off the gas pedal and, and wind down the, the exposure to stocks. And maybe you do a little bit of that, certainly on the concentrated position side, but you still need that growth in your portfolio because it's got to last you a long time. Um, you know, the ideas of pensions uh, isn't what they used to be, so now you, you have to provide more of your own resources in, in retirement. And so you need that growth in the portfolio, um, whether that's through you know, uh, funds or individual stocks, whatever it may be, but you need to have some exposure to equities going forward. Is that arguably especially important right now, given how low yields are on bonds and cash? You know, you, you got to be careful with that because a lot of people, because they are yields are so low, they're, mm -hmm. they're trying to find other ways to get that yield. So they dividend find themselves paying stocks, dividend paying one. stocks, uh, junk bonds. Bonds, MLPs, all good investments in the right allocation, but don't let your allocation get out of whack just because you're trying to chase some yield, too. So you've got to be careful about that. We've seen a lot of clients who become way too heavily allocated for what their risk profile is just because they're trying to chase that yield. So it, it, it's a tough balancing act, but that's where a good advisor comes into play. Okay. One other pitfall that you highlight is being too generous. And this is something that I've certainly observed with people I've talked to, uh, this issue of wanting to give to adult children, mm -hmm. give them what they need. A lot of folks 
mm-hmm. encountered hardships in the wake of the financial yeah. crisis. Parents are wrestling with this, retired parents. Yeah. But you say that that can be a big pitfall, being too generous with those kids okay. particularly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every parent wants to do the best they can for their kids. And you don't want to see your kids struggle because you know, you know want you've learned how to resolve those things. You want to help your kids get past some of those struggles as well. So they want to be able to help them out, whether it's financially or putting them up in a house or whatever it may be. But you've got to look at your longer term picture first. You've got a shorter time horizon than your kids do. They've got time to be able to bounce back, perhaps. You've got a limited pool of resources for your retirement, and you've got to make those last. And so you've got to be careful. You know, you want to, you want to help the kids out, but you've got to look at your retirement fi- picture first. And there can also be tax issues associated Absolutely. with those big withdrawals, too. Absolutely, yeah. Depending on what age you are when you're helping out, even if you're, especially if you're pre-retirement and you're trying to help those kids out, it can get very expensive to use IRA withdrawals or whatever yeah. else it may be. Yeah. One other area that you highlighted, a uh, potential area for mistakes for retirees, is in the realm of health care planning. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about health care costs, long-term care costs, why people people can mm-hmm. really shoot themselves in the foot yeah. if they're not planning for those costs appropriately. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that health care is, is a big chunk of what retirees spend their money on, and it's, a, it's the fastest growing piece of what they spend money on from a, from a year-over-year cost standpoint. Uh, but some people just uh, still are, are struggling to accept that and, and maybe aren't doing everything they can do to plan for that. And part of it is being realistic about what health care is going to cost you in retirement. Uh, and two is, is finding ways to supplement some of the, the options you have out there, whether it's you know beyond Medicare, but supplement mental policies and long-term care policies in particular. I mean, that's one that a lot of people struggle with is, is the cost of long-term care. Uh, you know, it, it's like any other insurance policy. You're, you're protecting against a catastrophic expense and nobody would ever think about not having insurance on their home or their car, but on their, on their health, they're, they're less concerned about that. Um, long-term care is very expensive. And uh, you know, while the coverage options are, are a little bit more limited maybe than what they were years ago, and it can be expensive, you're protecting against a future cost that could be even more so. Can you share any guidance on um, who should self-fund long-term care mm-hmm. costs? I know that in, in the past there have been some income bans bandied about. Like yeah. if, you're in, if your overall net assets are over this level, you may be okay paying out of pocket. Any, any thoughts on that topic? You know, that's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. You know, their willingness to pay that out of pocket is going to be different at each level. Um, you know, certainly as, you, as your portfolio gets larger and larger and your net worth is larger, you're more able to sustain that and, and, and cover those costs. But uh, you know, when, uh, writing that check is difficult for anybody at any income level. So when it, when it comes to paying for nursing home costs, I think you got to be careful. I don't know if there's any rule of thumb on that specifically. Uh, it, it's going to be an, a, an individual choice. Okay, Tim, thank you so much for being here to share these mistakes <laughs> as well as ways that people can avoid them. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com.